Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 16. We are on page number 108. And on page 108 you will find some percentage problem, percentage word problems. Before we do the percentage word problems, we're gonna solve we're gonna solve some, we're gonna look at some very simple percentages and then we'll solve the problem. We'll, we're gonna do a few of them very quickly. So let's begin the word itself, percent. What does it mean? We talked about it before. Percent. What does the word literally mean? Well, it, lit it literally means what it says. It means per 100. Per 100. Or if you like, out of 100. Or if you like, over 100. That's what it means. We have done this before. We know it already. For example, if, it, if we are told 37%, what does 37% look like when you express it in terms of fraction? Well, simply 37 out of 100. 37 over 100. 184 percent. Well, again, simply be 184 out of 100. And so on and so forth. For example, 24.3 percent is just 24.3 out of 100. Whatever the percentages are, it simply means whatever the number that they give you is out of 100. Let's look at Let's look at a very simple thing, 10%. What does 10% mean? 10% means 10 out of 100. As you can see, 10 out of 100, this fraction can be reduced. We can divide top and bottom by 10, or we can divide top and bottom by 10. If we do that, the zero, zero, uh, one zero gets knocked out, and we are left with one tenth. So 10% of anything, 10% of anything, is simply one-tenth. One-tenth of whatever it is that is given to us. For example, for example, if they ask us what is 10% of 30, 10% of 30, uh, sorry, rather 300, 10% of 300, we don't actually have to turn this into a freak show by taking 10% as 0.1 and, and multiplying it by 300 is not necessary. 10% of 300 simply means one tenth of 300 is 300. One tenth of 300. When you divide 300 by 10, the zero gets knocked out and it's 30. And once we understand that concept, once we understand that concept, we don't have to do this middle step. We don't have to do this middle step. If they ask us what is 10% of 300, we take out 300 and we knock out one zero because if we divide 300 by 10, zero gets knocked out. What is 10% of 10% of 220? Well, now that we know 10% of 220 is simply going to be 20, 220 divided by 10, zero is going to go away. 220 divided and it becomes 22. 10% of 220 is 22. 10% of 140 is simply 14. Now let's look at the problems. It was a very simple thing, but it helps to understand it conceptually. It helps to understand it, uh, the theoretical concept behind it, instead of always doing it out mechanically. For example, the very first problem they give us is this. The very first problem that we see there is this. It's a word problem, obviously, the very first one. They tell us that 15%, 15% of flights were delayed. At the airport we are told that in a given day 15% of the flights were delayed. We have also we have heard the toll that we had a total of 22 flights. And the, what they're asking here, what they want to know is how many were delayed? How many were delayed? 
And again, if we wanted to, if we wanted to, we could turn this into a freak show by taking 15% as 0.15 and then multiplying it by 220. We could certainly do that, but it's not necessary. We already know, we already know that 10%, 10% of 220 would be 22. We're not interested in 10%. They're asking, they told us that the 15% of flights were delayed. Well, if 10% is 22, that implies that 5% of the same number must be half of it. Makes sense. There we go, we have our 15%. Therefore, 15% of the same number must equal 33. And that's it, that's our answer. 33 flights were delayed that day at this particular airport. Let's look at the next one. In the next one they tell us, this is problem number three, in the next one they tell us that the original price of a jacket was $140. We are further told that this jacket right now is on sale. It's on sale at 30% off. Question simply is, what are we going to pay for the jacket if we were to buy it today when it is when it is on sale at thirty percent off? What will we pay? What did we pay for it? Well, let's see what we can do, shall we? Well, first thing we have to understand is that we don't have to do it in two steps. We don't have to figure out thirty percent of one forty and then subtract that amount from one forty. We could if we wanted to, it would not be wrong, but it's not necessary. That extra step is not necessary. What we need to understand is that if we are buying it when it is on sale at 30% off, which means we are only going to pay 70%. In other words, we simply have to figure out 70% of 140. Let's see what, how we can do it. Well, we already know that 10% of 140 will simply be 14. But well, we're not interested in 10%, we're interested in 70%. Well then multiply the both sides by 7. As long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, equation is always valid. So if we multiply both sides by 7, we will have our answer. 10 times, 10 times 7 is going to give us our 70%. So 70% or 140 now, all of a sudden, all we have to figure out is what is 14 times 7, which is very simple. 10 times 7 is 70. And 4 times 7 is 28. There we go. We're going to buy the jacket for $98. $98. And if you did not understand what I did here, you see, 14, obviously, we know, 14 is made up of a 10 and a 7. So when we write 14, this is not a 1, this is a 10, because this is a 10 digit. So when you want to multiply 14 times 7, it's not, when we do this, it's not 1 times 7, it is 10 times 7. 10 times 7 is 70. And then you do the next step. 4 times 7 is 28. Voila. That's all. Let's do the next one. So that was problem number 3. I left problem number 2. I skipped problem number 2 on, on, on purpose. Now we'll do it. Problem number 2. It says that we bought... $60 worth of groceries. We are further told that the sales tax is 8%. In this particular state, the sales tax happens to be 8%. Question is this. Question is, what is the total bill? How much did we pay the checkout counter given the fact that we have to pay 8% on the $60. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to first figure out 8% of 60 first and then we're going to add $60 to it and we'll have our answer. Now as you can, as you, as you can see, 8% is not quite straightforward as finding out 80% of something or 10% of something or 30% of something because those are multiples of 10. This is 8. So we just do it out. 8% of 60 is what we are interested in. That's the question. How much is this? Well, we're simply going to translate it word by word. 
8 percent means out of 100 of means times 600 this is what we are interested in finding out well I see a 0 here I see a 0 here which means this is a multiple of 10 this is a multiple of 10 let's knock them down let's divide top and bottom by 10 this 0 is going to go away and now all you have to figure out is 8 times 6 which is 48 and we have a 10 at the bottom here don't forget that 48 divided by 10 when you divide 48 by 10 we simply pick up our decimal here which is here move it one place so it's 4.8 that's the tax and the grocery itself was sixty dollars so there, there you have it we are going to pay sixty four dollars and eighty cents in the checkout counter we are, paying, we are going to pay sixty four dollars and eighty cents so those were the word problem percentage word problem that you find on page number 107 and 108 on the next page you see there we have five problems there again percentage problem percentage word problems we're going to do the we're going to do them next time okay bye now